Hello everyone and welcome to Star Citizen in Alpha 3.8. I am once again checking in to see how things are coming along. And here is the character customization system, which I think I'm getting a little bit more familiar with compared to previous times. But still, it's a little bit haphazard the way things work as far as I feel. Though I did get a character to my liking eventually after tweaking certain settings, mixing some of these possibilities together. Uh, looked fine, and then the hair options were interesting to say the least. I was looking for a ponytail, there was no ponytail. Uh, there were some weird choices, like that one. Uh, like, I just got a bed or something. Uh, but yeah, I settled for one that I thought was suitably punkish. Sort of remind me of the Expanse. Uh, sort of an Expanse belter sort of look. And uh, went through some of the colors to figure out what would be best. This was recorded during a live stream, so during flight, because of bitrate reasons, it may look more stuttery than it actually was for me, so I put the frame rate in the upper right hand corner for your reference, to, so you can see what I was actually seeing. For 3.8, it looks like we have a whole lot more spaceport options to spawn in. We previously had Port Olisar, and otherwise spawned where we previously left off. But now I decided to spawn at Grimhex, which I had never been in before. I know it has been a popular location, I guess. I've heard a lot about it, uh, so decided to spawn there. It's a little bit stuttery here, as you can see. I'm trying to walk around. It gets a little bit smoother as we uh, explore the area. I was trying to figure out how to get my ship, and so I looked around. It wasn't entirely obvious immediately. Went into some stores, looked at these equipment options. These are sh uh, this is ship equipment. Uh, though I wish I'd say what kind of equipment each of these were, because, I mean, otherwise, why would you buy, I, you know, batteries, I guess? Uh, but there is a panel there, there we go, uh, so that we can uh, check everything out in better detail than just wandering around looking at them. I'm not too sure the look of the item really tells you a whole lot anyway, so this is probably for the best. Anyway, all of that was outside of my price range. I continued to explore, <laughs> basically trying to find a computer system to hail my ship and it is quite a complicated place with all sorts of little corners I was also interested in it because I'm trying to do some 3d modeling and all the clutter I sort of muse about how it would be modeled so it's of interest to me as a 3d modeler as well and here we have the weapons these are actually a little bit more in my price range even though I only have the starting 5000 alpha UEC and yeah, but I don't really need them because I don't anticipate combat just yet. Uh, yep. Well, at least the type of combat I'm going to be getting involved in. Not in this episode. I'm not doing any combat in this episode. Though I do look forward to that later on. But uh, it's more ship-to-ship -ship combat. Yeah. Not much of an FPS person, to be honest. Uh, Grimhex looks entirely decrepit. <laughs> uh, this... Attacking on the walls, you know, it could be artistic, but the, the trash lying about is definitely problematic. And, yep, lots to render here, though, so, yeah, lots for the stream to keep up with, and that caused all sorts of problems as far as the smoothness of the video. Sorry about that. As I looked for a computer to summon my ship, I found this finds and citations payment system, and, well, fortunately, when I logged in as user, and access the system, I found I had no outstanding fines. So good times. I would have been a little bit shocked if I had an outstanding fine. The reason I had such trouble finding how to call my ship is because it's actually down this elevator. We actually have to go into the elevator and go down first and then access the computers. In other spaceports, usually the computers were at the main concourse level and then you would go down the elevator to uh, get to your ship. But that is apparently not the pattern here. So on finally accessing the computer, I noticed alongside my Mustang Alpha and Merlin, which I expected, I also had a free freelancer, which I guess is a loner. Previously they had given me a loner of an Aurora MR, but now I have a loner freelancer, so I decided that I would definitely take that out. I mean, why not? The Freelancer is a much bigger ship, of course. In fact, it's not on one of the normal pads. You see landing pad 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 there, but it's at landing pad 1, which is bigger. Uh, so yeah, very special. I have not flown the Freelancer, actually, I don't think. 
Uh, during some of the free fly events, I had flown some other ships, but not the Freelancer in particular, if I recall correctly. Anyway, we'll get a look at it as we go through the airlock system here and cycle through. And we immediately meet up with the butt end of the Freelancer. It sort of reminds me of Serenity from Firefly or something like that. Um, there are a few other sort of rapscallion ships, you might say, that it uh, harkens to. But I get on board, go through the cargo bay. And as a copious cargo bay, I think it's like 66 units compared to a 4 for the Mustang Alpha. So if I still have it available for the next video, we can do some good missions there. We are in the middle of an asteroid field. During the live stream, somebody noted that my heart rate did not go up at all, despite all the running I was doing around the station. And I assume that that's because of the low gravity. Because this is an asteroid field, there's not much gravity, and so my heart's just not doing a whole lot of work. Previously, in stronger gravity, like on Hurston, I had noticed my heart rate going up much faster. And so I decided later on in the video to test out the heart rate thing when we arrive at our destination, which is Microtech. I've never been to Microtech before. I had seen a little bit about it on Bad News Baron's stream. I watch Bad News Baron for my Star Citizen things. And so decided to visit Microtech this time. Unfortunately, that is a uh, quantum jump away. And Well, the first little jump here is not a whole big deal. Um, I gave a little burst of the weapons. Four guns. Uh, it looks like four, fa uh, four forward-facing ones, and then there's a turret in the back. So uh, this is just a minor jump to a standby point so that we get a good view of our target. But then the main jump takes about eight minutes, which is a long time during a live stream to uh, try and entertain people while we're coasting. Now, I'm not averse to long flights, of course, I do Flight Simulator, X-Plane 11, all that, uh, but there's a lot more scenery, frankly. Though, you know, the Freelancer does provide some nice scenery. Uh, maybe some bling inside, uh, if we could walk around inside, I know we can walk around inside, uh, that might be a thing. But anyway, the interior does look good. I, I appreciate the interior of the Freelancer. But here we are approaching Microtech and I don't have a whole lot to do. I didn't really want to get out of the seat because previous times when I've gotten out of the seat during uh, Quantum Jump, it didn't always work out perfectly. So anyway, arriving at Microtech, that's us coming out of the jump. And now I do another jump to uh, approach our target city. So I ultimately don't land at it. So, New Babbage. Interesting name. And I guess I'll just call this a suborbital jump, basically. Unfortunately, it doesn't deposit me exactly where I wanted it. It doesn't deposit me right over the city. Instead, we end up quite a bit out by the time it finishes up. And that causes another little trip in. Uh, the trip in ends up taking maybe five, six minutes. And that was a bit annoying, of course, after just having that quantum jump. But anyway, I did it. Uh, the problem was we couldn't really see the city in the cockpit very well. On the outside, we could. You can see it on the horizon there. So it puzzled me why it wasn't very visible in here. I guess the glare from the interior. I would hope that there's some way of compensating for that on the windshield. Maybe have a compensated view. But anyway, there is the city. I continue to look at it from the outside view, which is probably bad as far as frame rates. You can see the frame rates are definitely dropping for me. Not as bad as it seems, but it was still a little bit stuttery because it had so much to render. It's a nice looking city, and I will sort of tweak my settings to see what would work best as far as making sure I can approach it fluidly in the future. I would like to cruise on through it in a nice cinematic fashion in an optimal way. I don't know what there is to do here, to be honest. I only have a cursory knowledge of it. Uh, I knew it was an interesting place to visit. That's about it. I don't even know if there's a landing location. I presume there is, but I decided not to land this time. I was looking mainly for the views, and I saw a sunrise. So I decided to go after the sunrise, because that is probably a more spectacular view than even the city, though 
The city in a sunrise might be good too. But anyway, I headed off in this direction. I don't know how long it takes for us to wait for a sunrise at the city. And I didn't have a whole lot of patience after those jumps. So here we are skimming around. There are apparently trees on Microtech. So, breathable atmosphere of some kind, I guess. Nice view. Very nice view. Didn't notice any problems with handling right now. Eventually you'll see me landing on the surface and it's a very well controlled landing so uh, I didn't have that sort of wobbling problem that I had previously even though I haven't really tweaked my control settings. So that was nice. Really nice landscape. Uh, I appreciate the varied terrain, the mountains and all. I mean it's almost like X-Plane 11 at this point. At least with X-Plane 11's default scenery as opposed to photo scenery. And the sunrise at rate is better than X-Plane's. So yeah, that's a very nice sunrise. I don't know what it looks like inside the cockpit. <laughs> after, after my woes trying to find the city inside the cockpit, I basically stayed outside for, for all this. You notice the frame rate is much better now. And that's basically because I'm keeping the camera steady. Every time I move the camera, it has to sort of refresh things. As long as I keep the camera steady instead of looking around too much, uh, it can keep up. So I probably need to do that if I want to make more coherent things in the future. Honestly, the terrain scatter here, though, uh, did give me Kerbal Space Program vibes. I think I've spent too much time in trying to find rocks on various Kerbal Space Program bodies at this point. And yeah. Those just struck me as very Kerbal Space Program-y rocks. <laughs> uh, yep, they're just all over the place. I'm not much of a geologist, but... Uh, yeah, I'm not much of a geologist. Otherwise, the terrain looked fantastic. Just the terrain scatter seemed sort of poking out, if you will. Okay, very controlled descent, none of those back and forth swings that I had previously. I like the effect as we touch down here, just in general the smoke and all. And shutting the craft down here, I always reach for the power off. I know there's probably a hotkey of some kind, but anyway, click that and we're off. So, out to the sunrise. Number of automatically opening doors and then the cargo bay door. And that is our exterior. Running around, the sound of my footfalls seemed about right. Uh, inside the station though, uh, for some reason, my character seemed to get out of breath or uh, make exclamations even though I was just descending stairs at a brisk pace So that was a little bit weird ship looks good. I was amused by the rescue Arrow pointing to what appeared to be no panel, but maybe you just drill in that spot and the rescue Whatever it is is there But uh, yep I tried to test the heart rate and indeed the heart rate went up to, I think I got to 140, was 133, 135, 140, just 140, I was running to this rock, so yeah, heart rate stuff works, I don't know what kind of gravity is on Microtech, but I guess it's a little bit less than is on Hurston, and yeah, otherwise enjoyed the sunrise, and it was a nice view. So anyway, that is just a first taste of Alpha 3.8 in Star Citizen, and I will uh, check in more with it and try out the Freelancer in practical missions in the future. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.